Hi, I'm Pastor Deb, and it's April 23rd. Do you know this little book? It's called Radical Amazement by Judy Canato. I might have shared it before. It gives us new language and ways to think about the holy by combining theology with cosmology, the study of the universe. For example, Canato compares Jesus' death and resurrection to a supernova. Obviously, I needed help, so I went to see Dr. Jeff Brown, professor of stellar astrophysics at Seattle University, a man who studies the stars. Professor Brown gave us a wonderful explanation of supernovas, a whole hour's worth, which I will not share here. But the short version is, a supernova is the death eruption of a star, a very large star. When the star explodes, it flings bits of cosmic debris into space. Those collide with hydrogen and interstellar dust to, billions of years later, create new stars. Astronomers have long posited it's how we got our own sun, and not just our sun. This pattern of living and dying and new life being created powers the whole universe. Death is inevitable, Kanawha says, but so is resurrection. Being at an institution where spirituality and theology and whatnot are very close to the surface, yeah. but in as tolerant a way as I have ever seen, uh -huh. it's easy to look back also tolerantly and try and understand the relationship between uh, those two different traditions. Yeah, and make room. And make room. In 1987, the Hubble telescope got a picture of a supernova. Finally, proof. Seeing is believing. At least it was for Doubting Thomas, our reading today. Let's go worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. By his mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Although we have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our second reading is from the book of Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. And I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand. I shall, I shall not, not be shaken. shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also rests, shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy ones see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Hey folks, it's Miss Kendall. Today, I have a question for you. Have you ever heard a story that was hard to believe? What made you believe it? A lot of the times, it's faith. And we're going to talk about someone named Thomas. He was one of Jesus' disciples. And Thomas had a really hard time believing that Jesus came back from the grave. And he thought he had to touch and feel and see him to really believe that it was true. And guess what? Thomas did get to do that. But we don't have that opportunity. But we can feel him in our souls, and that's called faith. So just like we can't see the wind, we believe that Jesus is there because the Holy Spirit is in our hearts. And we can see the works that Jesus does throughout all of us and throughout all of our worlds. And that's pretty darn cool. See you later.
Downing Thomas, the name is embedded in our lexicon. To this day, we speak of a skeptic as a Downing Thomas. It is the way this disciple is always remembered. It's the only way he is remembered. And it's a bad rap. Why not loyal Thomas? In chapter 11, Jesus, having fled Jerusalem, gets a message calling him back. And the disciples say, Rabbi, they just tried to stone you there. Are you going there? But not Thomas. Thomas alone said, let us go also, that we may die with him. Thomas is loyal. Or why not literal Thomas? In chapter 14, on his last night, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, and you know the way. No, no we don't, says Thomas. We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas is literal. Or why not lucky? Lucky Thomas. After all, Thomas gets what he asks for. Jesus is dead. The disciples are hiding behind locked doors, afraid. Suddenly, Jesus is there among them saying, Peace be with you. Showing them his hands, his side. Showing them his wounds. And then, that's when they know him. They know the Lord and they rejoice. But Thomas wasn't there. He gets the story secondhand and he's not convinced. Unless I see, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples are again gathered inside. The doors are shut. But Jesus comes among them saying, Peace be with you. Showing Thomas his wounds, inviting him to see and touch, to poke and probe. Lucky Thomas. He got the personal experience of Jesus that he asked for, which is not the answer to prayer that everyone gets. John's Gospel was written about 70 years after Jesus' death. Peter had preached, and we ourselves were witnesses, but that generation was dying off. Is Thomas a story for all the doubters struggling to believe then and now? Why does faith feel almost in with reach but so hard to grasp? I believe that you can wheel that wheelbarrow across a high wire, but do I trust enough to get in? If faith is a gift, is it just one more thing where some are gifted and others are not? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Most scholars think that this story of faith and doubt is the original ending of John's Gospel. For one, it sounds like an ending. These were written so that you may believe. Not everything is written in this book. But these are so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and through believing, you may have life. Secondly, all the other Gospels also end in doubt and faith, a mix. Why would you end a Gospel that way? It's, it's messy. It's confusing. And it's also honest. Then as now, some believe, some leave. And some keep struggling to understand how some force, some power that we willingly call creator of the cosmos and source of life can give new life to what has died. Lucky Thomas, Jesus circles back for one who struggled. Jesus made room for Thomas, and Thomas responded, my Lord and my God. It's the strongest affirmation of faith we have in the whole New Testament. <clears throat> Can you read that? Do you think we as Christians will ever believe that Thomas was a disciple of great faith? I doubt it, says Thomas. I doubt it. You know, whatever happened in that upstairs room, However, Christ was present, saying, peace be with you, saying, receive the Spirit. 
The disciples, including Thomas, came out changed, transformed, and they changed the whole world. Legend has it that tenacious Thomas died a martyr's death, preaching the good news of what he experienced firsthand, a self-transcendent love that is more powerful than death. Rachel Held Evans, theologian, writer, and a woman of great faith, said, On the days I believe, on the days I believe, it is still the story I'm most willing to risk being wrong about. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us is gone, yet somehow, Jesus is among us, and maybe it's when you say, peace be with you, or when I hear the words given for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins, then I know the Spirit is alive and creating wounds, our wounds, will always be part of our story, but they don't have to be the end of our story. Failure and even death is not the opposite of new life. It's the precursor. God is circling back for us. However unbelieving, however fearful, God is circling back, inviting us to see and to touch, to poke and to probe, and to say with whatever faith we can muster on any given day, my Lord and my God. Amen. United in the hope and the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit into he of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains and with sun in the appropriate seasons. Strengthen us to make all efforts that we can, can to counter the effects of pollution and destruction before it is too late to save our world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders at the local, state, and national level. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief, especially Gary, Becky, Andrea, Jay, Judy, Doug, Al, Kevin, Ralph, Jan, and Suzanne, and the youngest ones, Gracie, Tyler James, Tristan, Holly, Vivian, and all those we name aloud or silently. Bless those preparing for baptism, Emma Jean, Natalie, Madeline, and Daniel and Scotty. Lord, send your care to all touched by recent mass shootings at a school in Nashville, a bank in Louisville, a gas station in Kansas City, a neighborhood in Patterson, New Jersey, at a park in Louisville, five miles from the bank, at a dance studio in Dadeville, Alabama. Not all make the national news, but all bring pain and grief in their wake. We pray for all the victims and survivors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, show us your presence along our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and to one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. As Jesus taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. <laughs> Peace be with you. Let's see you at church. Peace be with you. We want you to church. Peace be with you. We want you to church. Bye-bye. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. From the Circle of Flutes. Peace be with you. It's time for the news. You know, you can see us and we can't see you, but we'd like to. So please, will you drop us a line? You can use the email on the screen all throughout the announcements and let us know if you need home Holy Communion or anything, we'd like to hear from you. Today is the Earth Day Festival. You can pick up your pre-ordered hanging baskets in the park. Lots of fun things to do, that's at 11 a.m. How many Creekside decks are there at Our Saviors? How many parking spots, you know, I don't know either, but if you come May 7th to the Forum on Outside, 
at Our Saviors, you can ask those questions and more about plans for sprucing up outside at Our Saviors. April 30th is a preview of an upcoming series, Sacred Ground. It's on racism, systemic racism. It's a 10-part series. Take a look. See if you want to be a part of that. That's here on April 30th. Are you graduating? Do you know someone who's graduating? We want to honor all our grads on May 21st, so please drop us a line. Let us know if someone in your family is graduating. And as for Home Holy Communion, we have a wonderful team who will bring that to you. Pastor David and I also love to come see you and bring you the sacrament. Please call us or let us know if we can do that for you. And thank you. Thank you so much for all the ways you support all the ministries here at Our Saviors, whether you give online, whether you give by check through envelope. If you need any help, just give us a call and thank you.